Right now, I'm very pleased to welcome back to State of Belief Radio the Right Reverend Gene Robinson, the retired bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of New Hampshire, and the one man, honestly, the one man who from the day the Supreme Court agreed to hear these cases, we knew we absolutely had to have on the show to react to whatever the outcome would be. And so here he is now. Gene, thanks for being with us again on State of Belief. Well, it's, it's a happy day to be here. Thank you so much. You know the question coming. What was your reaction to the DOMA and Prop 8 rulings? You know, um, I, I continue to be amazed at how significant it is for me and other LGBT people to have the affirmation of the state. You work for it for 20 or 30 years, but when it comes, it is still an astounding thing, Mm -hmm. uh, to have the society of which you are part finally say, uh, you're welcome to be here. And in fact, um, you deserve what everyone else has been enjoying for generations. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a wonderful thing, and my heart has been full ever since. Who's the first person you called? Well, now, who do you think? I called my (laughs) husband. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, we've been together for 25 years and married since January 1st of, of 2010. Yeah. But uh, this makes a huge difference. And, I, you know, I, um, I was uh, saying to Lori Goodstein of the New York Times, you know, so she said, well, so like, what difference will this make? And I said, well, I'm about to get on an airplane and fly to Minneapolis. And if my plane goes down, it means that my husband gets my Social Security benefits. Mm-hmm. Right off the bat, that's, that's true, and that has never been true before. And yet, you know, like everyone else, I've been paying into the Social Security system for 40 years, mm-hmm. and, uh, but that's never been true for me. And, and I have to say, it, it, it makes a difference uh, knowing that, that you're providing for your loved ones. Yeah, I think there are a lot of people that don't realize what kind of financial difference it makes, financial not in terms of making a profit, but financial in terms of security for the people you love. That That's ex- exactly right. And and there are just so many things. I'll tell you another little thing that, that has bugged me for years that will now go away. And this sounds like a little thing, but it's just one of the ways the society has reminded people like me and couples like us that we are second-class citizens. You know, when you travel outside the country and you're, and you're coming home and you're approaching the U.S. border, the flight attendant comes down the aisle with those immigration forms. What he or she says is, one per family. Mm -hmm. So she turns to me and Mark, and she says, I'm sorry, you'll have to have two two forms. Mm. And then the the young, um, wide-eyed, heterosexual couple who have been married for a week, (laughs) and um, they're coming home from their honeymoon, and one form will do nicely for them oh, yeah. because, you know, they're a family, unlike the two of you who mm. are just pretending to be a family. Gosh. And now that goes away. Yeah. And one form will do nicely for us as well. It, it just means a lot. Of course it does. <laughs> when you were leading the fight for inclusivity at, at my, I might say, great personal and professional risk, did you honestly think this day would come in our lifetime? Well, I, I have to say that um, uh, as I was growing up, uh, nothing like this remotely occurred to me. I mean, it was so far out of the realm of possibility that you, you didn't even imagine it. But in the last 10 years, uh, I, I do have to say, I have, uh, I have been incredibly hopeful. I mean, I'm always hopeful, right? I mean, that's what Christians are. Uh, we're hopeful if nothing else. Yeah. But, but um, in the last 10 years, seeing this... Uh, momentum forward has just been thrilling, and and uh, I I hoped that we would see it. I'm I'm still hoping that I will see marriage equality across the nation yeah. uh, before I leave this good earth and go home to God. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the the momentum because I've I've been hearing a lot of commentators say that. They're just amazed at how quickly the tide turned on LGBT issues in general and on marriage in particular. 
Uh, my hunch is it doesn't feel like it's been all that quick for you, does it? Well, you know, some of us have been working on this for a <laughs> long time. Uh, but but I must say that, that the last decade to the two or three decades before that uh, has, has seemed uh, really remarkable. Yeah. Uh, I don't think ever in the history of this movement has there been so much movement forward in such a short uh, period of time. And, you know, I think the reason we are where we are in this last 10 years and making this kind of progress is that 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, people would have told you they didn't know anyone gay. And now, uh, is, is there a family left in America that doesn't know some family member, some former classmate, some coworker to be gay or lesbian, bisexual or transgender? And yeah. that has made all the difference because when, when people know us, uh, when this issue comes up, a face comes up with it, mm-hmm. uh, and a, um, often a, a relationship that they know about comes up. Yeah. Just simply not willing to believe the things they've been told historically about us, and and they're no longer willing to um, to treat us unfairly. A- every American knows what fair is, and and this just stinks of unfairness, and and so the tide has changed. You know, I know that you and I have talked about it uh, at least two or three years ago, and others have have made even more of it. This is basically a a conservative Supreme Court. Uh, Has it been, Gene, the rise of affirmation from the public, or what has it been? What What's happened with this court that it would make this kind of two decisions? Well, um, gosh, you know, we've all, all been trying to figure out uh, where the where the court would come out on this. Um, and and even I, I'm shocked. Uh, you know, one of the one of the most things that happened uh, yesterday was the fact that uh, instead of of putting down DOMA on on a federalist uh, argument, you know, that, that, that this was the federal government messing in what is rightly a state's business. Um, for them to, to base this on the equal protection um, uh, of the Fifth Amendment is, is really, mm-hmm. really significant. And and I am I am so pleased. And of course, you know, in in a, one of those funny coincidences, uh, Justice Kennedy is reading his opinion yesterday on the exact day that is the tenth anniversary of his opinion that um, that was in uh, Lawrence versus Texas, which outlawed the anti sodomy laws. Right. Um, and in and in another another way, uh, uh, believe it or not, Justice Scalia uh, did us uh, an enormous. Back in uh, at ten years ago in Lawrence versus Texas, he said, by normalizing homosexuality, that is to say, decriminalizing it, he said it opens the way for gay marriage. <laughs> and ten years later, we find out he was right. And then yesterday, in his dissenting opinion, he says. Um, uh, given the fact that the majority has ruled on this based on the equal protection um, clause of the Fifth Amendment, it opens the way uh, for all of the constitutional amendments in states uh, that defines marriage as only between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, it opens the way for them to fall as well, and uh, I'm hoping he's going to be right again. <laughs> um, so I, I think this is a, a hugely uh, I- important um, finding it uh, m- uh, almost more than the decision itself, up or down, uh, is the the reasoning that is actually behind it, which was far stronger than even I had hoped for. You know, Scalia may be better at his prophetic statements than he is his opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You know, we can always use a good prophet. <laughs> Are you concerned at all, Gene, about uh, the backlash in the short term? No, no. Um, uh, let me tell you why. Uh, you know, just because we we got the Jim Crow laws off the books in the segregated South, uh, didn't 
people's uh, hearts and minds changed overnight. Uh, you get a 51% vote, you've got 49% who didn't agree with it, right? Mm -hmm. And and it takes time uh, for that to normalize and for for uh, people to adjust. Um, you know, one of the things that that we found in New Hampshire uh, is we, we got civil unions in 2008. And when we were pushing then for marriage equality, we were able to say to the legislature, you remember all of those draconian things that were going to happen if we got civil unions, you know, mm -hmm. like the end of Western civilization as we know it. Anybody, anybody see any, any of that happening? <laughs> and, of course, even those opposed had to say, mm, no, not really. Uh -huh. and, and that's how quickly things uh, normalize. When people see that their marriages aren't affected by this, their church, their synagogue, their mosque uh, does not have to uh, offer or bless any of these unions, um, this will become old news and, and really kind of boring, which, is, uh, which would be a wonderful place to be. You know, I've heard you say several times in the past, uh, speaking of the Episcopal Church, uh, you, you have said that this is the church that is risking its life for people like me. Does this validate the risks of the Episcopal Church, and will it help in uh, move opposing factions within religious institutions toward reconciliation? You know, I do think um, it's... You know, we have been accused of, of following the culture, rather than uh, rather than uh, being a gadfly to the culture. And and what I say in response to that is, you know, what if God is working in the culture? <laughs> uh, I mean, it seems to me that God is going to do God's will and God's justice work with or without the Church. Mm -hmm. And and if God is working in the culture, and then uh, a, a denomination recognizes God in that work and joins God there, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, not only is it not something to be ashamed of, it is something to be proud of. And I think uh, more and more uh, people will um, face into the question we've really been asking, which is, could the Church have gotten this wrong all these years? Uh, the way we got it wrong for countless generations using Scripture to justify using Scripture to justify the denigration and subjugation of women. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, I think the answer to that is yes, and, and that, that's really what, what churches and, and people of faith are struggling with now. Could this be one of those moments in which the Holy Spirit is leading us into this uh, truth that's always been there, but, but we've not been able to perceive it? Well, I, I absolutely know that you think that. I, I was, uh, was reflecting this morning, uh, J.B. Phillips, an English scholar that, that you may know, had, had written a book a long time ago called Your God is Too Small. And those I've got who, it on my book. I've got it on my bookshelf. I look at it about once a year. Yeah. I I love that book, yeah. and and the title says it all about it does. the little boxes that we put God in yeah. that God refuses to stay in. Yeah, I, I mean God God refuses to stay in just the church. And uh, when you talk about the Spirit moving in social progress. Uh, that's not heresy. That's a that's a broad view of God that we see revealed uh, in in Scripture. Absolutely, you know, and uh, I think the most relevant um, Scripture to the debate we're having is in John's Gospel, where um, on uh, the night before he dies for us, uh, Jesus says to his disciples. There is much that I would teach you, but you cannot bear it right now. So I will send the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. And, you know, I, I think he was saying, look, for a bunch of uneducated, rough fishermen, you haven't done too badly. But, uh, in fact, I'm kind of proud of you. But don't think a minute that God is done with you or that God will be done with those who follow you because the Holy Spirit is, has still got more to teach you that you simply can't bear right now. And so I will send the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. And I think this is one of those moments. The Right Reverend Gene Robinson is the retired bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of New Hampshire. 
the first openly gay bishop in his denomination. Gene has helped pave the way for much of the forward progress we've seen in recent decades in his life, his ministry, and in his writing. Gene's books include God Believes in Love, Straight Talk About Gay Marriage, and In the Eye of the Storm, Swept to the Center by God. Gene, I don't know of anybody I wanted to talk with more than I wanted to talk with you today, and it is so good to hear from you. I thank you for taking time to be with us again on State of Belief Radio. It has been my pleasure, as it always is with you, Weldon, and and uh, let's rejoice together in this. <laughs> 